bars around the house. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace and fit a shower bar valve, like this. In this example, I'm using a Triton shower bar valve, but the basic principles are exactly the same for whichever valve you're using. So the first thing you want to do is make sure on the old shower unit, you measure between the two centre points. Now these shower units are a standard size and are usually 150mm from that centre to that centre. So just ensure that's what you've got before you go out and buy a new unit to attach to the wall. So the first thing to do is find the isolation valve that cuts the water supply to the shower and turn it off. You don't want water pumping out all over you when you take the unit off the wall. If you can't find the isolation valve because it's hidden under the bath or something like that, your second option is to turn off the main stock cock in the house. But make sure nobody else needs the water supply while you're doing the work, or otherwise you've had it. Before we take the unit off the wall, I'm going to disconnect the shower hose. And we'll get a bit of water coming out of this now. Just make sure when you remove the shower hose, you find the rubber seal, because that just fell out then. Watch it doesn't go down the plug hole. That just goes inside there to create the seal later. Now if you've got a whole new shower unit, you may be changing all this anyway. In this example, I'm actually taking this bar off to do a few repairs, and I'm going to put this one back on the wall. So I'm going to be replacing this shower hose back onto this bar unit, but for the purpose of this video, I'm replacing it exactly like if you bought a new unit. So for this next bit, we literally undo these nuts there and there by rotating them anti-clockwise. Now a little tip I got for you here is if you've got chrome-plated brass like this, I always put a cloth over the top before using my adjustable spanner. If you're a bit unlucky, sometimes if it slips, you find it'll take a bit of the chrome plating off and it'll expose the brass underneath. Better to be safe and sorry. All I'm going to do is place my cloth over the nut, locate the spanner over the cloth, and tighten it up like that, and then just rotate that gently there, anti-clockwise, and that's just gone loose. Now don't undo it totally, go to the other nut and do exactly the same, bit by bit, and then undo them both by hand and bring them out. If it twists slightly, you might find it goes a bit tight on the threads, and you want to avoid damaging these threads or knocking these pipes around too much, because if you do, then you're onto a whole new job altogether. In this example, I'm going to be leaving all the thread and all the pipe work in place. We're just changing the bar. And this way, this is a really simple DIY task that anyone can do. Same again, put the cloth over the nut. Gentle turn anti-clockwise and that's gone loose. There we go. So I'm happy with that. Then just undo both nuts. There we go. We've got a little bit of water just came off there. If you look inside this nut, you'll see you've got a filter and then you've got your felt washer by there. That's the felt washer that comes supplied with your new shower bar. These ones look a little bit squashed because they're a bit old now and they've been on there a while. When you get your new shower bar, you need to add the felt or rubber washer, whichever's supplied, in there. And then you need to do the same on the other side. And then that is what creates the seal against this metal threaded bit here. The other thing to note with these thermostatic mixer bars is that the thermostat is actually controlled by using the cold water, not the hot. So you'll find the thermostat and the cold water is always on the right on these shower mixers. The hot water supply is always on the left. So just make sure if you are installing the water supply for the first time and you want to put one of these in, always cold water on the right, hot water on the left. So this side just controls the flow of water by rotating it clockwise or anti-clockwise. And this side, you can see, is the thermostat. And again, you just rotate this clockwise or anti-clockwise to make it colder or hotter. If you have a look underneath the shower mixer, where the shower hose attaches, you often get these supplied now with showers. And this basically reduces the flow of water, saving you money if you're on a water meter. And the way this works is you just slot that into that hole there, push it in and then when you attach a shower hose over the top that basically just slows the flow of water down and means that for example if you had a four minute shower you'd probably use about half the amount of water depends which one you put in there but that's an excellent little device for saving money and saving a bit of water if you're bothered about the environment so again if you're replacing a shower bar just watch that doesn't fall out if you need to reuse it sometimes these shower bars come with these supplied but this is also something you can buy as an extra to add to your shower bar these shower bars will come supplied with a cover, like that. This particular shower came with this curved cover there, but I didn't use that. This one here came with a fitting kit, which is all attached to the wall, so I chose to use that one instead. 
They're a universal size, so you can either use the one supplied with the shower, or often the one supplied with your fitting kit, if you're using a separate kit to the one supplied with the shower. Now in this example, I've used this kit because it's an excellent little design, and the one that came supplied with the shower is quite cumbersome and difficult to fit to the wall. If the ones you've already got on the wall are in good nick, and you're happy to keep them, then you can leave them in place and don't worry about them. However, if there's new ones supplied with the shower and you want to remove these ones and put the new ones on, that's also fine because they'll probably look a bit better. But it's what I would recommend in both scenarios is carefully taking these off the wall and having a look underneath and making sure that there's no breaks in the sealant. We don't want water getting down the back of this and behind the tiles. So let's take a look at that. So with this, there's no sealant around the edge of this one. So it's easy enough to come away. Sometimes you'll find people will put sealant around the outside edge of this. I personally prefer to put sealant on the inside, which I'll show you now. If you put it around the outside, it means that you always get a bit of mould growth after a year or two, and it can be really annoying. So there we go. If you have a look here, you can see the sealant is in perfect condition. And the hole behind here was perfectly filled with this sealant and will stop any water getting behind the wall. Downside is you do get the odd trickle goes through here and you can see a light bit of rust on that screw by there So if you're unhappy with that you can always put a beer sealant around the outside of your chrome piece once it's fitted It's entirely up to you. That's my personal preference I don't like the mold that grows around the edge as long as there's no water getting behind my tiles I'm happy that it's not going to do any real damage If you do find that your sealant is poor or nobody's ever put any in there in the first place Get yourself a good bead of sealant in there, wedge up the hole and let it dry off. Then put your cover over the top. Now this little device here is brilliant. It's basically called a bar valve wall mounting kit. And you see these in different guises on the internet. Briston do them, Swirl do them, I think Myra, possibly Triton. And they're called either a wall mount fixing kit, a bar valve fixing kit, sometimes a fast shower fixing kit. So they're readily available these days. And is what you have is this metal bracket that secures to the wall. Your copper pipe comes through. You place an olive over the copper pipe. Then this metal thread here is screwed onto this metal bracket. And with the olive, it's basically a compression fitting which creates the seal. And then our bar shower valve just goes over the top and creates another seal here, either using a felt or a rubber washer. Very simple, fairly easy to fit. But I'll show you how to do this in another video. So I'm going to put that back on as I'm satisfied that there is no water getting down the back of those tiles and just gently do that up hand tight. I've had a look behind this one as well and I'm satisfied that that's the same. So now I'm ready to put the bar back on. In this example, I'm actually replacing the same bar because I took it off because I needed to have a look inside it. If this was your new shower unit out of the box, you need to get your rubber or felt washers and place those inside like you can see these ones here. And we simply put it back on in the reverse order that we took the other one off. It's really that simple. Just offer that up to the threads. Just turn it by hand until the thread bites. And then bit by bit, just turn each one in, taking the bar in evenly until you can't do it up by hand anymore. Then we'll get our spanner like earlier We'll put a piece of cloth over this and just tighten up really gently. Now this bit doesn't need to be done up really tight. Once you've got it hand tight, just a gentle nip with a spanner and that's it. It's only a felt or a rubber washer and that'll be perfect for the seal. Right, take your cloth again. Put your spanner over the nut. And this time we go clockwise. Just tighten that up like that. That should be fine, until you feel a bit of resistance, nip it up and that's it. If you do get slight weeping when we turn the shower back on, we can always go back over it and tighten it slightly. But better to tighten it later than to over tighten it now and damage the fittings. So there, and that's it, that's the bar fitted. We're now going to attach the shower hose just underneath the shower bar by here. So just make sure that your rubber seal is in the end of your shower hose. If you've got the water flow reducing device, Place that in there first, like that. Then just take your shower hose and secure that back on. So there we go, that's the bar fitted back to the wall with the shower hose attached. Now you need to go and turn your water back on and then we'll turn the shower on, run it, turn it off and just check that we haven't got any leaks coming through the back here or here. So for this I've just taken the shower hose off 
So I don't want to get water everywhere. And I'm just going to spray it down into the back. Just check around the back for any leaks. And then just knock it back off. Because obviously when the shower's off, that's when there'll be more pressure behind you because the water's not escaping. So now is the time to check whether you've got any leaks. And it's what I'd suggest is if you don't have any leaks, come back in half an hour and just give it another check. If you've got any leaking or any weeping, just tighten that up like I showed you earlier. Small, gentle nip, don't over tighten it, and then check it again. And it should be fine. For more DIY, how to, household tips, and product review, please watch my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. I've been Pouser in the house. Ta ta, farewell.